Hey there, today we're going to be taking a look at the B-Link SCR5 Mini PC and compare it to the B-Link SCR6 Mini PC. Now, specs wise, on the SRE5, we are looking at the Ryzen 5 at 5600H paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 3200 megahertz, and that is at JDEX speeds. And we, of course, have a 512 gigabyte SSD. On the SRE6, we are looking at the Ryzen 5 6600H paired with 16 gigabytes of DDR. 5 RAM running at 4800 megahertz and the same 512 gigabyte SSD capacity but this time around we have a gen 4 speed SSD instead of a gen 3. So what we're really looking at here is an improvement in terms of generation for the SSD, an improvement in terms of generation for the RAM and for the CPU though we are talking about a relatively low speed for DDR5. 4800 megahertz with JDEX stock speeds actually has really really loose timings and that is going to affect the performance of the iGPU. Now if we compare the chassis between the two the SRE5 has a nice metal finish and this nice metal mesh grille at the top where here you can actually see the top fan and overall the build quality is more than adequate it is very decent a lot of the mini PCs that you see around these price ranges tend to be made out of plastic and this actually feels really really well made. In terms of the front IO we we are looking at two USB 3 ports as well as a USB C port that actually does support display out. We also have a recessed clear CMOS button, a headphone jack, and of course the power button. On the back of the unit, we unfortunately only have a one gigabit port. It would have been nice to have had at least two because that does give you some versatility with what you can do with these systems. But we also do have one extra USB 3.0 port and then one USB 2 port. And we do get two HDMI outputs. Overall, not the best IO out there, but it's decent enough. My biggest complaint really is just a very limited amount of USB ports. I think if they could have squeezed in another two in the back, even if they were 2.0 ports, it would have been nice because as it's configured right now you do kind of end up eating up a lot of your USB ports just with peripherals and you specifically lose out on your 3.0 ports you could always use a dongle with the USB-C but now you have a dongle that's hanging out of the front of the system now for the most part the SRE6 is very similar we're gonna get a pretty much identical layout for the most part the only thing that's different is that the top cover is mesh but the front IO is pretty much identical as well as the back IO pretty much being an identical setup. This time around though, the ethernet port is a 2.5 gigabit port. So you do actually get an upgrade there though. I'm still very disappointed with seeing only one. I really would love to see two because it really helps to make these mini PCs into some very capable servers. Overall, I would say that the build quality on both of them is more than adequate. And I really would not say that there has been any major generational improvements. It just overall looks a little nicer but the overall build quality and even the upgradability is very similar. You get access to an extra 2.5 inch SSD slot at the bottom where you could put in a hard drive if you wanted to, but you pretty much get a lot of the exact same experience between the two and they both run into similar limitations in terms of expandability and a limited selection of USB ports. But the front USB is also USB 4.0 on the SRE6, but I would suspect that for the vast majority of people that doesn't really matter too much. Now in terms of the CPUs, there isn't a drastic difference between the Ryzen 5 5600H and the 6600H. In terms of a Cinebench R23 score on the Ryzen 5 5600H, I ended up getting a score of 8002. In comparison on the Ryzen 5 6600H, I ended up getting a score of 9010. So we're looking at about a thousand point increase here which isn't a very drastic jump really now part of what's going on here is the fact that the sre6 actually does have a higher tdp than the sre5 does with the 5600h the 5600h as a apu has a stock tdp of 
45 watts, but the SRE5 with it has a TDP of 35 watts, while the SRE6 does use the full 45 watts. Now, for the most part, this actually doesn't make that drastic of a difference because as I've shown in other videos before, there is diminishing returns to DDP and for really cut down parts like this where you're only dealing with six GPU cores and six CPU cores, you're really not using that much power in a lot of situations. But in a situation where you are loading up all of the different CPU cores, that can actually make a difference. But overall, if the CPU is what matters to you the most, there is no real reason to go with the 6600H at the price that it sells at right now in comparison to the SRE6. Where you really see the biggest difference between the two systems is in the GPU performance. Here we're taking a look at Mountain Blade Bannerlord running with the built-in benchmark on both systems with the bare minimum graphics settings. And of course, we aren't using dynamic resolution scaling, which would enable FSR on here. Now, both are providing a decent level of performance considering the fact that this is a big fight scenario. But there's a noticeable 22.6% increase in terms of average between the 5600H and the 6600H. Now the 1% lows only saw a 13.33% increase so it wasn't really that drastic and overall you're going to get a great gaming experience off of both systems but the 6600H does end up taking a lead here. So while you will get a nicer experience on the 6600H it isn't a drastically different one where it's going to make a difference on whether or not you'll be able to play this title. Now we're moving on to an older title here. We're taking a look at Metro Last slight with the built-in benchmark running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. Now here you can see that both are providing a decent level of experience here, but there is still an increase in terms of performance. We're seeing an increase of 23.6% on both the average and the 1% lows, so we're getting identical performance uplift on both. Overall, the 6600H is providing a better gaming experience here, and remember when I said that it has a TDP of up to 45 watts? Well, as you can see, here it is just not using that much the performance difference between the two is pretty noticeable but we're talking about an increase in one to two watts in terms of the amount of power being used here so considering the fact that we are looking at a 23.6 percent increase in performance those extra two watts really don't matter at all here but again both systems will provide a great level of experience in a title like this and it really is the type of game that works well with these types of mini pieces sees an older AAA game that will let you get some great FPS at a nice resolution. Now we'll move on to Cyberpunk 2077, which is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR with the performance preset. As you can see, both are not really giving that great of an experience here, though we do see one of the biggest increases so far we've seen in terms of average, that being a 33.3% increase. But the 1% lows actually only got a 9% uplift, which means that overall the gaming experience is actually going to be very similar between the two. You're really not going to have a great time here and you could always go with fsr set to ultra performance but really at that point the game is going to look so hideous that even the most dedicated gamer out there is probably not going to be able to stomach through it now the game that saw the biggest increase in terms of performance and was kind of an outlier in the limited testing that i've done so far is hitman world of assassination running with the built-in benchmark here both are running with the game at the lowest in game graphics settings but we are using fsr with the balanced preset instead of performance as you can see here we are looking at a pretty drastic 61.7 percent increase in terms of fps average and a very very similar 59.25 percent increase in one percent lows this is a massive increase in terms of performance and makes a huge difference in terms of the playability here we're talking about a 30 fps average that isn't even consistent to an almost 60 fps average Average, but you will be comfortably above 50. In general, a pretty massive increase, but as I said, it was kind of an outlier here. But I did 
have a very limited selection of titles here and I will probably be diving deeper with a wider selection later on. Now the final game that I wanted to take a look at for this comparison was Total War Warhammer 3. I wanted to try something that really is different from most of the other titles that end up getting tested which tend to be more focused on FPS or just third person adventure games. So this is a little different here and of course the level of performance that we're getting with the lowest in-game graphics settings is pretty brutal at the full 1080p resolution. Both systems are really struggling here though we are seeing an increase of 33% on the FPS average though on paper that looks a lot better than in the actual experience since an increase of 20 up to 26 while very noticeable is not going to be enough to make this a great experience and of course our 1% lows only saw them barely break past 20 even though that is a 30% increase. Out of sheer curiosity I did drop the resolution down to 60% of course keeping the same lowest graphic settings and we do see some massive increases in our FPS averages here and our 1% lows and now the increase between the 5600H and the 6600H is 35.9% in terms of the FPS average and our 1% lows see a pretty healthy increase of 41.1%. So a pretty nice uplift here and overall it shows that we're seeing around a 30% increase in terms of performance when it comes to games here. Now again this is a very limited selection of titles though it was a varied amount in terms of genres so we could cover a few bases here and of course if you're playing things like indie titles or if you're into esports titles you're going to get great performance out of both of these systems here. Now between the two systems we do see a pretty noticeable increase in terms of performance in games. The thing is price points have drastically changed as of right now. Pretty much the SRE 5 with the 5600H has been pretty much phased out and kind of replaced with the version with the 5800H which is a 8 core instead of the 6 core and we are looking at a Vega 8 iGPU instead of the Vega 7 on here. It's really not going to make that drastic of a difference in terms of performance in games though in CPU heavy tasks having those two extra cores is going to be pretty meaningful since we saw with Cinebench that there is not that much of an IPC uplift. So those two extra cores is actually going to be useful if you are in a CPU heavy task. But because the SRE 6 is starting to hit the $400 price point versus around the $300 to $350 price point that we'll see the SRE 5 currently with the 5800H, the performance increase is pretty much going to be worth the price difference. We're talking about pretty much around a 15% price difference difference for what is around a 30% performance uplift. Now, of course, this is if you're going to be gaming again, if you're mostly going to be relying on the CPU, then the 5800H is going to be a very, very nice option because as you saw, there wasn't really that much of a difference between the 5600H and the 6600H. The 5800H having those two extra cores is going to make a difference for you. But outside of that scenario, it really is worthwhile to put in that extra $50 to get yourself the 6600H because games do not need all of those cores on the CPU as much as they need the better GPU. So definitely keep that in mind and keep a lookout on the market and just know that the version with the 5500U is going to be slower than the version with the 5600H mostly due to TDP limitations. But in general, I think that the SRE 6 has really started to enter a price point where it is worthwhile to consider because the performance uplift and the fact that you're going to be on a system that is actually getting optimized for, since RDNA is really the main focus for AMD right now, that is going to be better off than something like Vega, where you're kind of an afterthought considering that AMD doesn't exactly have the best driver division. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. So unless you could find an insane deal for the SRE5, I would definitely recommend going with the SRE6.